Hi, my name is Mary. Today, FM plays the best music in Lambasa. Today, FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osur. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, stolen vehicles from New Zealand impounded in Fiji. Submissions begin for conduct bill and multi-million dollar project to protect women. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spade. A Fijian is believed to be involved in a highly connected network which has the intention of making money from proceeds of criminal activity. The Fiji Revenue and Customs Service has cracked on a transaction aimed at importing stolen vehicles for the purpose of sale. Details with Rachel Nath. Chief Executive Vishwanath thus says over the past week, two motor vehicles that were reported stolen in New Zealand were smuggled into Fiji under the guise of spare parts and furniture. However, this criminal activity did not make it past the customs offices at the Latoka Wharf. Now, interestingly, interceptions of the same nature were also made by customs officers in 2018 for stolen vehicles imported from Australia. In the most recent incident, investigations revealed that a Toyota Hilux, which was registered as a rental car in New Zealand, was reported stolen on December 8, 2017. While a Nissan Navara, which was registered as a private vehicle in New Zealand, was reported stolen on the 4th of last month. The accused importer is reported to be a frequent traveler and is known to have traveled to New Zealand between the 7th and the 12th of last month. This is a few days after the vehicle was reported stolen. The shipment left Auckland on December 20th, a week after the suspect returned to Fiji to clear his consignment. Das reiterates that border security is serious business and a collaborative approach is being taken with both local and international border agencies to crack down on illegal activities. Das warns the service is committed to facilitate trade. However, with the processes, systems and partnerships in place, they will detect and intercept illegal activities and offenders will face the full brunt of the law. Rachel Nath, FBC News. Public consultations have begun on the Code of Conduct Bill, which is expected to ensure transparency and accountability of public office holders through an Accountability and Transparency Commission. In today's submissions before the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Justice, Law and Human Rights, the National Federation Party, while agreeing there is a need for such legislation, raised their concerns with several issues in the bill. Maggie Boyle reports. Labelled a toothless tiger, the political party highlighting their concerns with the proposed legislation. Section 10, subsection 3 operates as an absolute bar against anonymous complaints. And that is unnecessary. If we allow any unidentified person to actually lodge a complaint with the commission, right, just your thoughts on it. What about fake accounts? Right, lodging a complaint, yeah. A fake account lodging a complaint to commission. Calling for a need to specify certain aspects of the bill, the NFP also noted that there are questions on transparency. Truly transparent and accountable. It must disclose the outcomes of its investigation. It is fair that any such disclosure or reporting should balance the rights of an individual against the public's right to know about matters under investigation. The political party also querying complaints that may be politically motivated. Now, a person can actually be prosecuted because the commission forms the view that a person's complaint is politically motivated or designed to discredit or defame the subject of a complaint. There is no need for this because according to the Commission's own rules, nothing will become public anyway. Public submissions on the bill will continue next week with the committee travelling to the Western and Northern Divisions. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The European Union and the Australian Government have partnered to coordinate a $46.72 million program in Fiji and other Pacific Island countries. Head of Corporation at the EU Delegation for the Pacific, Christopher Wagner, says the program aims to address the issue of domestic and gender-based violence in Fiji. Kritika Kumar reports. 
Christoph Wegner says this is the region's largest single project to date, which brings together a number of stakeholders. It brings together government um, and also other stakeholders, community, community leaders, religious organizations, sport organizations, um, and, and civil society at large. And all this with a single purpose, which is to, to fight and, uh, and to end violence against women and girls. He says the program will ensure victims have access to quality response services. Meanwhile, Fiji Women Crisis Center believes a lot more can be done this year to support the victims of domestic violence. We need to do a lot of work in improving services around uh, law enforcement, uh, the court systems. A lot of good work has been done, but a lot more needs to be done. The common attitudes and beliefs in society need to be transformed to ensure people reject violence against women and girls, especially through key channels of influence in Fiji, such as education, faith and sports. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. U.S. President Donald Trump has called a Fiji-born immigrant an American hero. Trump was referring to 33-year-old Raniel Singh, who legally immigrated to the United States, where he studied to become a respected member of the Newman, California Police Department for the last seven years before being shot and killed by an illegal alien with a long criminal record. Trump mentioned Singh during an Oval Office address, discounting claims from the opposition that his border wall with Mexico was immoral. The only thing that is immoral is the politicians to do nothing and continue to allow more innocent people to be so horribly victimized. America's heart broke the day after Christmas when a young police officer in California was savagely murdered in cold blood by an illegal alien who just came across the border. The life of an American hero was stolen by someone who had no right to be in our country. The Ministry of Education, Heritage and Arts has successfully topped up approximately 80,000 government subsidized student blue e-transport cards, which are now eligible for redemption ahead of the start of term one. The Education Ministry says it has yet to record the total number of year one students in the Fiji Education Management Information System. Once that is done, details of all those needing assistance in terms of e-transport cards will be identified and assisted. Savada Thumbo reports. The need for parents and guardians to try and obtain a temporary card from any Vodafone outlet to be used in the meantime by students is vital. We request our parents to get their um, uh, birth registration um, uh, form and take it to any Vodafone outlet in order to get the yellow card. Students have been urged to take care of their cards after being topped up. Uh, yesterday, that some students uh, misplaced their card again, their redeem card uh, for, for this year. I've already topped up cards for my children, and I'm urging parents to please help your kids in doing so. Don't wait for Monday. First tip season is over. Now education for our children should be our priority. Parents are advised to ensure they do their part in ensuring their children report to school prepared for the 2019 school year. Sabo Ratamboa, FBC News. Still to come, former WAF employees appear in court and Frank Hilton laid to rest. Details after the break. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in the cash on the water wrong and bullet fib. Number two, I answer. Why are you washing size, Lombasa? Yang dua telita ini baru menang bola FM nampak dua answer. Gua dah kembali aku nak tahu nih nak toka telita kita nampak baru menang bola FM nampak dua answer. Nampak dua answer nampak dua. Nai dengan gua fanya nak tahu nih gua singa toka kita untuk telita kita nampak bola FM nampak dua answer. Bola FM nampak dua answer. Two former employees of Water Authority of Fiji appeared before the Super Magistrates Court today, Laisia Savalesu and Vilimaina Kalokalo, who both face corruption-related charges, pleaded not guilty. Catherine Krishna reports. Laisia Savalesu is charged with one count each of abuse of office, forgery and obtaining a financial advantage of more than $13,000 in 2016. The second accused, Vili Maina Kalokalo, faces one count of abuse of office. 
It is alleged Vale sued the former Water Authority of Fiji Land Acquisition Officer enabled the processing of false payments using falsified documents, which allowed him to obtain a $13,348 advantage under the Pineapu Sewage Project. Kalo Kalo, the former Water Authority of Fiji Assistant Project Manager, is alleged to have facilitated the processing of the false payments. The FICA Council said there were full admissions in the caution interview of the first accused, which they will be using during trial, along with 20 witnesses and 11 documents. Defence lawyers for the two accused informed the court that they will not challenge the caution interviews. The matter will be recalled on April 4th. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. As back-to-school shopping continues, the Consumer Council is reminding parents to engage in comparative shopping. This comes as the council survey reveals that some bookshops have increased their prices of books this year compared to last year. Sainiani Mboila reports. Consumer Council Media Manager Tevita Wimbao says parents should be vigilant while shopping for school supplies. We had compared the prices of uh, exercise books from 20, uh, 2018 to the prices today and we had found that um, the prices of exercise books had increased by uh, from a range of 10 cents to a dollar. Um, because of that, we are advising uh, consumers to please do uh, comparative shopping. Um, there are traders that will be selling text, uh, exercise books for cheaper than others, and um, this will allow consumers to save money. Wimbao has also called on retailers to be compliant and avoid falling onto the wrong side of the law. Uh, we are also advising our retailers who are selling these textbooks uh, to please be ethical and set the correct profit margins on exercise books. <laughs> While doing our back-to-school shopping, we have noticed an increase in prices, so we had to check all bookshops before we buy my grandchildren's exercise books. We entered almost every store as we do our back-to-school shopping. Now it's done. All my books are here and I'm ready for school. Council has also called on the consumers to check their receipts and ensure that the price displayed on shelves is the same as that charged at checkout. Traders are also cautioned to ensure that all exercise books sold are fit for use. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Senior staff of the Ministry of Agriculture were today urged to contribute to discussions during the Strategic Development Plan workshop in Nandi. Speaking during the opening, Deputy Secretary Corporate Services and Planning Vatimi Rayalu says that this was because at times during workshops participants would be present just to make up the numbers. Details with Philippe and I Castle. Not mincing his words, Vatimi Rayalu told senior staff present during this workshop to be actively involved during the discussions as the strategic plan is vital. There have been a lot of workshops where we have come here, eat, drink grog, okay, and go back and forget about what we talked about. That is not going to happen under my watch. I have already briefed the uh, secretary yesterday before we I don't want anyone to sleep on the dock. Everyone must stay, stay awake and we must see this plan through. The formulation and implementation of the strategic development plan will also depend on the staff at the ministry. This strategic plan is just a piece of paper. Okay? It's the individual, it's you and me that's going to carry this plan forward, that's going to implement the plan. Involving other stakeholders to contribute to the plan is also important. Uh, I would be recommending that instead of a plan, together with a plan, what is lacking is an action plan rather than a plan itself. It was also stated during the workshop that at many times, once a strategic plan was formulated, it was shelved and forgotten which the ministry is trying to change. Philip and I, Caso, FBC News. Hundreds gathered at Suva's Sacred Heart Cathedral today to pay tribute to the late Frank Hilton. Hilton was the founder of Special Education for Children in Fiji, and his work boosted a network of schools which caters for children with disabilities. Kelly Vavala reports. <laughs> People from all walks of life and various organizations, including Hilton's family, spoke on his achievements and commitment to children's education. Granddad was rare, an amazing selfless man who dedicated his life to serving others. He unassumingly taught my siblings and I a lot about life, challenging us to strive for the core values that he held dear 
and that made the greatest generation worthy of their name. Grandson Matthew Hilton says his grandfather has left a legacy. His story is etched into our family history and his ethics of community service, altruism and his ability to see the potential in anyone regardless of their circumstances are firmly entrenched in the values we hold and pass on to his great-grandchildren. A message from a former student was also read out where she expressed her gratitude towards the late Frank Hilton. Still remember all the special moments with him from long ago. He makes everyone smile with his kind words and humble ways. I really learned a lot from him. Government officials and members of the diplomatic corps were also part of the funeral service. Hilton was laid to rest at the Old Silver Cemetery. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Coming up in sports later with Jamie, Silver Football sets target, but Rachel joins you now with business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up after the break. Stock exchange rates 2018 highly. And in growing Fiji, Women Crisis Centre maps new centres. Stay with us. Lola, I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Seni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Dino. I'm from Africa, Coroco, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM. All of the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Missouri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altiga, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Leaving business tonight, the South Pacific Stock Exchange says 2018 was an impressive year despite slow economic activity. Exchange Business Development Manager Pitesh Prasad says with the general election and the recovery from adverse weather conditions, the SBSC achieved an all-time high market capitalization. Here's more details. The total value of all the companies that are listed on the SBSE rose to $3.07 billion last year, which is an increase of 71%. The increase in market capitalization was on the back of a um, couple of factors. One, of course, was the continuing increases that we're seeing in terms of share prices on the back of greater investor demand. That was one. The other thing was we had uh, a new listing in the form of Contiki Finance Limited. We also had uh, some of our existing companies quoting additional shares on the market as part of their corporate restructure. Of the 20 companies listed, 13 secured high share prices. We had seen an average dividend yield of 2.9%. Uh, as well as a capital growth on an average basis was uh, 37.8%, as well as the average capital growth, it gives you a 41.7% average total market return. There are close to 19,000 investors on the stock market, with 209 new investors entering the SBSE last year. And we now join Sharon from HFC Bank with the latest from the stock market. The sentiment was mixed in Forex market today, with the US and China trade deal being the focus point. Global stocks have been railing on hope of a positive arrangement between the two economic superpowers. Meanwhile, the U.S. Federal Reserve's meeting minutes indicated that policymakers are rather cautious about further rate hikes. The Fed is expected to be more data dependent. This seems to have provided the needed comfort to anyone concerned about the global growth prospects. However, the weaker momentum of the greenback gave a bit of push to our Aussie and Kiwi counterparts. And that's it from HFC Bank for now. Finaka. On to the exchange rates as it was set this morning. The Fiji dollar had a mixed day. Our dollar gained against the US and the Kina and it fell against the other currencies we cover. Taking a look at the commodity prices, it was all up today. Crude oil closed at $51.71 per barrel. Gold closed at 1292 an ounce and silver closed slightly at $15.69 an ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, the Fiji Women's Crisis Centre has mapped out its plans for this year and is working with 13 Pacific Island countries to step up, rather to set up new centres. 
Centre Coordinator Shamima Ali says a lot of work needs to be done this year, which includes mentoring and training. Ali says the organisation will continue to raise awareness of violence against women through its extensive community education programme, as well as community awareness and training for government agencies. Meanwhile, the FWCC now has a new shelter for domestic violence and rape victims in based in Bar, Lambasa and Suvo. We shall continue our counselling advocacy work, stronger on our advocacy, uh, you know, working, you know, uh, developing and nurturing the partnership with government uh, and, uh, you know, and generally just promoting what we always do, uh, going out into the community, maritime areas, our first priority. And that's a wrap from the Business Dirts for tonight. Jamie joins you with the latest in sports. Thanks, Rachel, and good evening in sports tonight. Babe expects a tough competition in the forwards. And Krishna says teamwork is vital. This and more after the break. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Singatoka, Mirchi FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mirchi FM rocks in Lambasa. I'm Soname Nasori Jackson. Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Baba Singh Alliance. Mirchi FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Kritika from Jack's Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is hot. PGOA's men's servants coach Gareth Baber will face a mammoth task in selecting the best available forwards for the second leg of the World Rugby Series later this month. With the return of Paul and Rani Sinukula and Chosoba Kurunambili, Baber now has more options in the forwards for the Hamilton Sevens. But he admits that selecting 13-man squads for tournaments is a constant balancing act. Other forwards in the team contesting for a spot in the final 13 include Sevuloni Modenadangi, Mesulame Konovula, Apanisa Dakaumbalavu, Benyamino Vota, and Skipper Kalyone Nasoko. You're always trying to get a balance in, the, in what you want, and, and you know, you, you've got players back, like I said, Apollo and, and Joshua, who give you uh, different assets on the field. And it's, you know, my job is to try and combine them in the best manner possible. Um, you know, we got it right in South Africa, we didn't get it so right in Dubai. And you know, I'm constantly racking my brains to make sure that, you know, it's hard to get decisions to select teams, and that's what I want. Three overseas-based players will join the Fiji men's beach volleyball trials for the Samoa Pacific Games in July. One player is already in training at the beach court in Laudala Bay, Suva, while the others join the squad next week. Meli Tabanga reports. National Rapid Pacific Mini Games gold medalist India Korowale flew in from Australia to try out with a men's extended squad fighting for one of the 16 sports to be announced later this week. Um, one was uh, Inia Korwale, he arrived into the country last week. And we have Sakiu Sanevona and uh, Mr. Nambrusi from uh, uh, Australia. So, yeah, the, those are the only three men, uh, male players that, that we have. Fiji Beach Volleyball Director Chosese Tulele says overseas base players have to go through the selection process just like anyone else. We have a series of uh, training uh, fitness uh, sessions, uh, fitness tests and um, regular competition. We will have a 12-week league. So uh, basically we will do the cutoff during the Fiji Games, uh, which is on uh, Easter weekend. Men's coach and former Fiji rep Apinisa Sokuru says he's trying to get the players back on track after the festive season. I think some of them are a bit uh, slow, so we just uh, make sure that we start them slow this week. The next week, then we'll go up to the to another level. The extended squad will cut down to 16 before next week's three-week extended training camp begins. Meli Tavanga, FBC Sports. The Wellington Phoenix is on the verge of making club history after another crucial A-League win in Sydney. A double from Roy Krishna sealed the 3-2 victory over the Western Sydney Wanderers, with Wellington's latest signing playing a huge part. Manchester City's Gabriel Jesus scored four goals as the defending champions destroyed League One's Burton Albion 9-0 in the first leg of the League Cup semi-final. The result was the largest margin of defeat ever in a League Cup semi-final. 
In the other semi-final, Harry Kane's first half penalty gave Tottenham a 1-0 win over Chelsea at Wembley. The Spurs were awarded a 26-minute spot kick after consulting VAR for offside and Chelsea go goalkeeper's foul on Kane. In today's play of the day, Xander Schofle claiming his fourth victory on the PGA Tour at the Century Tournament of Champions earlier this week. The American finished the final round, equaling the course record with an 11 under par 62. That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather and the new media, Drone Patrol Saving Lives in Australia. That's right after the break. मैं नवनीत नन नंबुआलुंबुआ से जैसे प्रेनी नोट मशहूर है वैसे रेडियो फिजी टू भी सभी जगह मशहूर है रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन सीमा नकाशी से मैं रेडियो फिजी टू पसंद करती हूँ सुनने के लिए रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन मैं हूँ अंकल किंग सिंगापुर टाउन के टैक्सी ड्राइवर जैसे रग्बी फेम A new media fleet of drones fitted with cameras now patrol Australian shorelines to find deadly sharks and alert beachgoers. Over 50 beaches in Australia use the technology. The New South Wales government has announced it will expand the drone surveillance system along its 1,300-mile coastline. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. It was a glorious day throughout the country today. Sunshine was a beauty, but afternoon period so some rain. Now I know most are wishing for the showers to roll away so daily outdoor routines can be followed. Well, sorry to say, but they aren't going away soon. We'll find out more on that, but first, taking a look in the west, quite mild, scattered clouds and showers will be around. Eastwards from Pak Harbor to Suva, a mix between sun and light showers which can be expected later tonight. And up north, quite cool with showers also expected. At sea, it still winds 25 to 30 knots, very rough seas. For the tides, high tide at 10.28 p.m. with low tide at 4.56 a.m. Sunrise at 6.40. For tomorrow, well, it's Friday, but the more merrier the day, the more the showers. Tomorrow's temps, the hidden paradise Savu Savu will be the coolest center at 28 degrees. And looking further on to Saturday, anticipated showers are likely. The Eastern Division is in for heavy showers. So if you, ha if you happen to have plans, do note it's umbrella season as well. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, should Tourism Fiji revamp its marketing strategy to increase visitor arrivals? If the deck is done, then the tourists will close down. I think uh, at the moment, uh, tourism in the Shin Fiji is doing well um, compared to the number of years before. It's actually increased, so I think they're doing something right at the moment. So for me, I'm actually happy with what they're doing now. Should the uh, market uh, Fiji to the countries that we need tourists, uh, more tourists from, and especially to the countries, that uh, we don't receive uh, many tourists. We need more marketing in other countries for tourism to come to Fiji. Marketing is important in uh, every sector, so it is important for our tourism as well. Recapping the main stories for tonight, stolen vehicles from New Zealand impounded in Fiji, submissions begin for Conduct Bill, and multi-million dollar project to protect women. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment this week, we're asking, is Fiji ready for a passenger train industry? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day is from Adrian Prasad, taken at Silver Point in the capital. 
Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was the FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe. Bula, nevan go malaka ile loma go ngai na kasi ondo ba rong na mbula fep na bondo ay na sere. Oya o ba sit sai sai lombasa ya ondo telita ile ba rong na mbula fep na bondo ay na sere. Bua da tumeli ako na tau no hinga toka telita kina na ba rong na mbula fep na bondo ay na sere. Ewa na tuna na mbula fep na bondo ay na sere na mbula. Nevan go fane na tau no go singa toka kita ondo telita kana mbula fep na bondo ay na sere. Mbula fep na bondo ay na sere.